Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, police have made a major drug bust on the spirit of Tasmania, seizing $2 million worth of ice. A Victorian man is now facing serious drug trafficking charges as police ramp up routine checks to pre-pandemic levels. Two bags worth $2 million sniffed out of a Victorian's vehicle before it could hit the streets. Sends a strong message to criminals involved in the importation of drugs within Tasmania. The discovery was made during a routine inspection on the Spirit in Devonport. A 29-year-old has been arrested and charged and appeared in court this afternoon. The bust comes just weeks after Tasmania resumed a clear passage across Bass Strait, but the spike in the number of travellers has been matched by the number of police stings. It shows that Tasmanian police is serious about our drug enforcement. For sniffing out the hall, the crack team's clever canine Una enjoyed a moment in the spotlight. A job well done for the sharpest nose in the business. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmanian News. For the third time this month, the Tasmanian public servant has been stood down over allegations of sexual misconduct. The government has confirmed the person is from the north of the state and was stood down today pending an investigation. The allegation has been referred to Tasmania Police. No details around gender or employment location have been released. A man has been arrested, accused of causing $200,000 damage in Strawn. The 51-year-old allegedly rammed his vehicle multiple times into two parked cars on a private property before driving into a porch last night. Police say he was armed with a firearm, which he allegedly discharged earlier in the night. Those involved were related. No one was injured. After struggling through the pandemic, live music is finally stepping back onto the stage. Recovery grants will be handed out to six Tasmanian venues, but the industry says there's still a long way to go to help local artists back on their feet. Pouring life back into Tasmania's embattled live music industry, Hobart Brewing Company announcing 15 weeks of concerts next year, finishing with a two-day festival. A sign of recovery thanks to a Commonwealth grant program. The funding allows the uh, concerts to be viable, whereas otherwise with the restricted numbers they wouldn't be. It's one of six Tasmanian venues to receive funding, part of a $2.5 million pool rolled out across Australia. I think it's a really it's more important for the musicians than for venues like ours, because we have other ways to, you know, to stay afloat. They don't. What's important now is that we're shifting the funding to helping support bands and venues um, get back uh, on their feet. The Brisbane Hotel, another recipient, working hard throughout the year to support musicians despite restrictions. Because we've had to turn a lot of people away on some nights and a lot of the shows do reach capacity and yeah. sell out. Some relief coming on Friday when Tasmania's dancing band finally fell. We had two bands play on the weekend who had never had anyone dance in front of them. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. <laughs> Another $2 million will be split between some of the state's biggest festivals, including Dark Mofo and Mona Foma. So we've very consciously chosen these substantial festivals to fund, to support in Tasmania, uh, to help the state come back as quickly as possible. But Labor says it's too little, too late. This government is all show for show business. The arts groups, I'm sure, will welcome this with open arms. They'll be saying this is fantastic. Uh, but that's what you would expect a dying man in the desert to say when they're offered a drop of water. Meanwhile, the Premier is considering changes to capacity limits, but it's unclear whether that includes pubs and clubs. I welcome that funding here, and importantly, in terms of the arts sector, we'll have uh, more to say about um, uh, support for the arts sector later this week and in terms of um, COVID restrictions as well, especially in terms of theatres. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Police are urging those who head out walking to be properly prepared after two walkers lost their way near Meander Falls. The pair was found around 1am, having raised the alarm earlier in the day after getting lost while crossing a rock field on the track. This was a, a day walk, it's all it was intended to be, but mishap and misadventure can occur um, at any time to anyone and be prepared for that. Having been dressed for a day walk, the two were underdressed and cold, but otherwise unharmed. 
how Tasmania's utility companies have assisted customers during COVID has been a focus of government business enterprise hearings today. Taswater and Aurora Energy say they've been financially supporting both residential and commercial customers throughout the pandemic. There was not uh, assistance available to either the landlords or the tenants around water costs. Oh, certainly the, the price freeze that we've got on uh, sure. for the current financial Beyond the year price freeze. and our customer hardship program is accessible mm. to the, the customers that we build. The Aurora Plus app, which provides daily updates on power usage and costs, also came Given under scrutiny. The um, investment we've put into developing the product is to take the approach that only those who choose to use the product will pay the product service fee recognising that we're waiving that for our vulnerable customers who participate in the YES program. Hearings continue tomorrow with TAS Racing, TAS Rail, Metro Tasmania and the Port Arthur Historic Site Management Authority to front the committee. The Tasmanian timber company is partnering with a local disability organisation to develop high-end products to export across Australia. The program offering training and support to help workers develop new skills and increase employment opportunities along the way. Piecing together the foundations of homes and businesses. Workers at this Warrain timber plant busy this morning, turning Tasmanian oak into high-end products. But it's about much more than just creating furniture, also helping reshape our community. Show people that um, there are jobs out there that people with a disability can undertake and undertake very well. Possibility Group joining forces with Neville Smith Forest Products, the joint venture employing 12 people, training them for a variety of jobs. They could be doing anything from running moulders, grading and packing out packs of timber to go to market. I enjoy it because I like working around a lot of timber. Andrew relishing the chance to learn new skills, currently preparing for his forklift licence test. He's also keen to pass on his knowledge. I like to stay here for a long time to help keep training some, board, some um, workmates of mine in the future how they've been able to acquire skills and work at greater product productivity levels has been terrific, so it's really helped them grow. As demand grows, Neville Smith is looking at ways to expand the program. We already have plans in place to, inc to integrate further Oak employees to our other operations in northern Tasmania and southern Tasmania. All the timber that I sent to the customer is all good. good. They send it back, then it's bad. B a bad review for me. Waste pieces destined for landfill also getting a new life. Recycled as pellets for wood fires. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. More Tasmanian students will soon have access to high-speed internet with the continued rollout of the NBN. Five schools will have fibre installed directly to the premises, allowing them to access the top-end range of the technology for their online learnings. We will have 600 plus students um, with their own device. So that means having that many students to be able to access the internet quickly and it be there um, at a really quick speed is imperative to their learning. We've seen throughout this year, uh, in a year like no other, um, the importance and the value of connectedness and the importance and the value of fast, efficient uh, internet. The works should be completed by March next year. A new $6.5 million partnership between Tasmanian researchers and Dairy Australia is set to transform the industry. The Institute of Agriculture's Dairy High 2 initiative aims to help farmers research their productivity, increasing profits and sustainability. The program will include examining the impacts of growing more pasture and using less synthetic fertiliser. Dairy is currently Tasmania's largest farming contributor, worth more than $700 million a year once processed. The Hobart Cabaret Club is making a return to live theatre, sharing the story of one of Australia's most well-known sporting stars. Rehearsals are currently underway for a local version of Shane Warne the Musical. The show taking a light-hearted look at the Spin King's exploits, both on and off the field. It is, really is a rags to riches story from coming from failure to you know, being one of the greatest sportsmen of all time. I think it's always interesting playing 
a real person because you do have something that you can you can grab onto and really use as a as a performer. Performances will start in April at the Rest Point Casino. The town in the state's north is feeling the Christmas cheer filled with Santas. Lilydale's stuffed Santa competition has a winner, with a postman Pat display taking out the crown. They said that Santa Claus was coming to town. It turns out that town is Lilydale. Santa Claus is coming to town. We've handed out approximately 100 Santa suits for nothing to people in the community. We asked them to fill them and put it upside their house, outside their house business and with a bit of a theme if they can. Stuffed Santas are popping up all over the town. Organisers made a list and after checking it twice, they decided that this display was very, very nice. It was Postman Pat and his black and white cat won the thing. On Saturday, two judges and a cameraman and myself went round every one of them. We travelled 145 kilometres. The annual competition is in its fourth year and has grown from 40 to 100 entrants. It's growing in reputation too. This merry main road is bringing people from all over. It was quite busy this weekend. There are a number of new businesses in Lilydale and it's good to see that they've gotten an increased opportunity to do better business. We came through here because of it. Yeah. We had seen it, yeah, we'd seen it on, on Facebook. Santa's little helpers, spreading the Christmas cheer to all those who pass through. They're a great idea. Fantastic community spirited idea. Funny, something very funny. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Coronavirus may have upended Colony 47's annual Christmas lunch, but one tradition will live on. Local company Tasmanian Gingerbread producing more than 350 festive treats for the charity. Usually pieced together to form a gingerbread house, these biscuits will instead be added to hampers, distributed to those in need. It's unfortunate that I couldn't make something huge for them, but um, yeah, hopefully a little gingerbread man will, will do the job. It looks fantastic and the smell is amazing too, so uh, nothing better than a gingerbread smell and taste on Christmas Day. Too true. 450 people have already registered to receive a hamper. Ben McDermott will return to the Hobart Hurricanes lineup for tomorrow night's game in Launceston. McDermott is fresh off an impressive unbeaten century for Australia A, which ended in a draw. He's been named in a 16-man squad for the clash against the Adelaide Strikers. Jack Jumper's CEO says he hopes to have a coach selected for the new team by Christmas. More than 100 applications from around the world have streamed in, with the Derwent Entertainment Centre on track to be ready for the October season opener. Touring the soon-to-be home of the Jack Jumpers. We're uh, back at what would be called a shell of a deck. And now the challenge is to ensure that we can turn it into the nest for the jack jumpers. Tenders for the deck transformation close next Monday. Chairman Larry Kesselman is confident it'll be ready in time for the season's first game in early October. I expect it to be finished with plenty of time to spare, but I'm preparing for it to be finished the day before. And worst case scenario... We've got a little bit of leeway. We don't necessarily have to schedule the first home game day one of the season. We can probably give ourselves a week or two of the team being on the road, so it's going to be as tight as that. While the worldwide hunt for the coach is coming to a close with hopes of selecting one by Christmas. We've had a great breadth of knowledge in the sport um, from the US, from Asia, from Europe and from here in Australia and I'm very confident that uh, in what we've got and what we will shortlist and go through the next stage we'll get a really, really accomplished coach and someone who will call Tasmania home for a long time. Where the team will train is still up in the air. The plan is for this venue to be quite frankly too busy to be able to have them training here on a regular basis. And as for the Premier's stoush with the AFL boss... I had contact from Gil on Friday, and in fact I've spoken with him um, this morning as well, um, to make the point he called me. Uh, we're working through these matters. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmania News. Good evening, 33 in Hobart today, Launceston 27, Burnie a high of 21 and 22 in Devonport. 34 was the state's top today across the Bushy Park and Ooze, Lyweenie 23, 21 about St Helens and Low Head. On the close-up shows high cloud to the west of Tasmania with clearing low-level cloud about the north of the state. Further out, a large mass of middle-level cloud is sitting over coastal New South Wales and Queensland. Tomorrow shows a trough crossing Tasmania followed by a cold front while a high south of WA extends a ridge to the east.
Easterly winds tomorrow 10 to 20 knots in the central north and northerly winds 15 to 25 knots in the east with swells up to 2 metres in the west and south. A strong wind warning is current for eastern and southern waters from Wineglass Bay to Low Rocky Point. Tomorrow's forecast now Hobart 27, Adventure Bay becoming windy 25 in Taralea. In the north, Launceston 29, partly cloudy across Devonport and Bridport. Burnie and Marrowar tomorrow, partly cloudy 23 in Strawn. St Helens hot with a shower or two developing 32 in Swansea and Whitemark, partly cloudy. The UV forecast is extreme across the state with the sun setting at 8.43pm. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast, Wednesday showers clearing during the morning, Thursday showers easing during the afternoon and Friday mostly fine about the northwest showers elsewhere. Capital cities 30 and sunny in Perth tomorrow, Adelaide partly cloudy and Sydney expecting showers. And it's currently sunny across the state, Hobart 31, Launceston 26 and Devonport 19. That's all for weather tonight, Kim. And that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. The Big Bash is next for now. Good night.